Well, it's May 10th, and that means that A, it's almost Mother's Day, but more importantly, it's National Railroad History Day. And we're heading out to Promontory Summit, where they drove the Golden Spike in 1869, thereby creating a transcontinental railroad and ultimately resulting in May 10th being National Railroad Day. But we're going to go out there and we're going to watch a reenactment of the driving of the Golden Spike on the exact location where it first occurred with the two engines that they have there. Now, if you remember from the Disney episode, these engines were built by Chad O'Connor, who worked with Disney on uh, Disney's steam railroads and Disneyland and that sort of thing. Very cool guy, Chad O'Connor. At any rate, let's take a look at his engines and watch a reenactment of the driving of the Golden Spike. This whole piece of business kind of started in 1969 for the centennial of the driving of the Golden Spike. Up until that point, there really wasn't much going on up at Promontory. There was sort of a monument there saying this is where it had happened, but not much else going on. But for the centennial, they said, hey, let's build a visitor center and really dress that place up and let's get two a replica locomotive. So they took two Virginia and Truckee engines and they dressed those up to sort of look like the Jupiter and the 119, which they sort of did. But people said, gee, well, let's, let's build actual replicas. So in 1975, they contracted with Chad O'Connor and his O'Connor Engineering Company to build these two engines. The engines turned out to be quite spectacular, and they are accurate, as they say, to within about a quarter of an inch of the originals. Now, history doesn't make a whole lot of sense if it's taken out of context. You have to remember that in 1869, America had just finished fighting the Civil War and it had torn America apart. And this railroad was intended to unify America, to bring it back together as one nation. It was also intended to rebuild the economy by bringing the wealth of California into the Union. It's almost inconceivable how much influence this had on everybody. There wasn't a single American who didn't see their lives changed by the building of this railroad. The economy just took off and the Union added states at a rate that they had never added states before. New markets opened up in California to sell manufactured goods and produce coming out of California spreading across the country just an amazing influence on absolutely everybody and everything. When O'Connor started working on these engines, he had absolutely no idea how to proceed. There were no plans. All he had to work from were some historical records of what similar engines were like and the photographs of the engines that were there that day. He used a micrometer to measure dimensions off of the photographs, making his best guess and scaling and rescaling and scaling some more until he had a set of plans which he assumed were very accurate. The one thing he really couldn't figure out is what color these things were. All they had were black and white pictures. They did find one article referencing the Jupiter where they referred to the engine as being blue. When they were delivered, the Jupiter was painted red, but years later they said, well, we think it was blue, so they repainted it blue. And now there's even some debate that the 119 may have had some green on its tender. Unfortunately, the colors are just going to have to be a best guess because, well, they're just black and white photographs. O'Connor spent so much time developing the plans when they finally got around to building the engines, it actually went really quick and seemed fairly simple compared to the task of figuring out what they were going to build. Every year they reenact the driving of the Golden Spike here on May 10th and the locals get dressed up in costume and come out and help. 
Now, while they might not know what color the engines were, they sure as heck know what time the spike was driven. That's because the telegraph lines were hooked up coast to coast, and the entire event was broadcast by telegraph. For the reenactment, they wait till the exact moment when the festivities started and try to match it minute by minute as it occurred. Now they have an exact record of what was said and when it was said because the speeches had all been written out and the telegraph broadcast, of course that had to be written out because it was in telegraph, it was in Morse code. A lot of dignitaries had come in for the event, the dignitaries of the railroad, the railroad officials and the presidents of the two railroads were there, one of whom was the new governor of California, Leland Stanford. Four precious metal spikes had been formed for the occasion, not just a golden spike, but a pair of golden spikes, and a silver spike, and a silver and gold spike. A laurel wood tie had also been fabricated with holes pre-drilled for the spikes, and the spikes were simply dropped into the holes and then gently tapped with a silver track maul. The actual final spike was just a regular old iron spike driven in with a regular old hammer. It had been hooked to the telegraph lines so that the people coast to coast could hear the actual strikes of the hammer on the last spike. Church bells rang and locomotive whistles blew from one end of the country to the other to celebrate the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad. I think it's important to note here that this railroad was built by immigrants. Thousands of Chinese immigrants had been brought in from the west to build the Central Pacific, and Irish immigrants from the east had built the Union Pacific. None of these immigrants were shown any respect, especially the Chinese. The nation decided that now that the railroad was finished, they should simply deport them all. I think we need to remember this country's motto of E Pluripus Unum, out of many we are one. Well, there you have it, the Golden Spike National Historic Site, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. But if you find yourself out here in the middle of nowhere, you should come out here and check it out. Even if you're just coming down I-15 heading towards Salt Lake City, and you take the little detour off, it's a little ways back in there, yes, it's kind of due north of the tip of the Great Salt Lake, but it's not that bad, and you will get back there, and it is well worth the detour to check this baby out, because it's a good deal of fun if you're into uh, railroad history, and particularly into steam locomotives. Do, uh, do pop over to the channel. You'll notice there's a link down here that says Toy Man Television, and if you click on that, it'll take you to the channel where you will find all the other brilliant Toy Man episodes that you can watch some of those. And you can subscribe, because if you subscribe, then you will be notified whenever I put one of these silly things up, which I do every Sunday. Moreover, you can go over to Facebook. If you do Facebook, and you can find Toy Man Television page on Facebook, and you can like me there, and you can follow me there, and again, that way you will be notified uh, if I get uh, arrested or something like that. Well, I'm not sure how you found this particular movie on the internet. I hope you didn't find it boring. And I'll see you here again on Sunday next with a whole new show. See you then. Bye.